All right, kids, uh, we need to catch up on the sum and difference identities. So here's what we have going on. Uh, just a quick recap. Uh, if it's a cosine that we're dealing with, what we can do is we can either add or subtract to make some number that we don't normally work with. So here we have cosine of 15. Well, we deal with 30, 45, 60, 0, 90. We deal with all of those things, but we don't typically deal with 15 degrees. So by using the sum or difference, identity, we're allowed to work with this um, uh, 15 by using something like 45 minus 30. That seems to be the easiest thing to do. Uh, so that's what we're going to do with it in just a sec. So just uh, some things to notice about your formulas here. Uh, plus or minus, notice that this one goes to minus and then plus. So that means the sign's going to change. When you do a sign, notice that sign stays the same. So it's not going to change at all. Uh, now, we're primarily just going to use these, um, but there is another one. It has to do with tangent. Now, you know tangent is sine over cosine. Uh, so sine over cosine. So we're simply just going to use it that way. But notice it is our sine identity and then our cosine identity on the bottom. So we don't really need to know all three. We just need to know that the sines are cosine. Huh? We've been doing that for quite a while. All right, like I said, cosine of 15, we don't normally deal with that. So let's say that's cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. All right, well, that sets the stage for that part that's just above this. All right, so we're going to do cosine of 45, cosine of 30, okay, and we're simply multiplying these things. It is minus, so I'm going to switch that to plus. Now it's going to be sine in that order, sine of 45, sine of 30. All right, now you're going to check your handy dandy uh, uh, unit circle and find out what's going on. Now I know for 45 degrees, that's always root 2 over 2. And it's going to be cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. So you can use your left hand trick or you can use your unit circle, square root of 2 over 2, another 45 degrees. And sine of 30, well, that's going to be 1 half. All right, so I'm going to multiply the tops to get the square root of 6 over 4 plus the square root of 2 over 4. Uh, so that means I have the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4. So I have an exact value. Uh, we don't have any radicals in the denominator. Uh, so we don't have to do anything else with it. So that kind of cleans up cosine of 15 degrees, what exactly where it belongs. All right, the next one's pretty awful. Why is it pretty awful? Because it has tangent in it. Nobody wants to work with tangent. Right, that means I have to work with sine and cosine. But let's first figure this out. That's actually going to be tangent. I would like to add two things together and get 105. So that's going to be 60 plus 45. That's the way I wrote it down. If you wrote it 45 plus 60, is that the same thing? Absolutely. No big deal. We'll get the same answer. All right. So remember, that is a sine over a cosine. So using the chart that's above here, uh, you know, I'd probably print that out. Maybe I'll have that for you. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll hand that to you. If you're in my class, if you're not in my class, there's no way I'm going to hand that to you, just to be clear. All right, so the sine function means we're going to do a sine of 60 times the cosine of 45. Uh, dealing with the sine function up top, that means the sine remains the same. So cosine of 60 and sine of 45. So I just want to get this laid out and then I'll turn it all into fractions. Uh, cosine on the bottom. So it's cosine of 60, cosine 45. Uh, after you work with these for a handful of times, you get used to it. So cosine, uh, it is plus, so I'm going to switch it to minus. And then it's going to be sine of 60 times the sine of uh, what, 45. All right, let's get everything changed out here. So sine of 60, check in my unit circle, square root of 3 over 2. 45 is root 2 over 2. Plus uh, 60 is 1 half. 45 is root 2 over 2. Denominator, I have a cosine of 60. Oh, that's 1 half. 45 root 2 over 2 minus uh, 60 is the square root of 3 over 2. And 45 root 2 over 2. All right, that seems like a lot of stuff going on, but uh, let's just take it one term at a time and we'll be quite okay, I think, I hope, and we'll find out shortly. 
Uh, so first term I have is square root of six over four plus square root of two over four. That's kind of nice, right? Because that's going to be the square root of six plus the square root of two over four. Down here, I have the square root of two over four minus the square root of six over four. So it's divided by the square root of two minus the square root of six, and it's all over four. Well, this is a complex fraction. So what I can do is multiply. So four over root two minus root six. All right, so that got a little bit better, but not a final answer just yet. So here's where we're at. Square root of six plus the square root of two over the square root of two minus the square root of six. And I promise you, this is kind of as awful as it gets for my class. You got somebody else? That's your problem. I don't know about that. All right, GCF. This is a really tough thing to think about here. The square root of six and the square root of two both have a square root of two. So until you see this, you're like, that's crazy talk. Square root of three plus one. Uh, square root of two on the bottom as well, which is exactly why we're doing this. Right, so as I divide out, square root of two divided by square root of two is one. Square root of six divided by square root of two is three. Right, so that was super helpful. Oh my goodness, except for the fact that I just hit some button there. There it is. All right, so let's get rid of those. And right, I'm gonna divide that out. Yet there's still more work to be done because you have a radical in the denominator. So I have to use one plus the square root of three, one plus the square root of three on the top and the bottom. All right, so let's see what this turns into. On the bottom, there are conjugates. So it's one minus the square root of nine. It's one minus three. It's a negative two, negative two. On the top, a little bit of work here. All right, so they're all out of order. So I get square root of three. Um, I got uh, plus the square root of nine. I got plus one, and I got plus the square root of three. So let's clean it up. Square root of nine is three. So here's what I have. I have four, right? One plus three plus two square root three. Oh, my lanta, this whole thing, it just keeps going. Uh, four, two, and two on the outside. They all reduce. I have this weird negative hanging out here. Uh, so as I reduce, I'm just gonna divide them each. So it becomes negative two minus the square root of three. That is the exact answer for what? I don't know, for a tangent of 105 degrees the exact answer. Right? We're just saying exact because we're not rounding, we're not using uh, decimals, we're keeping everything exactly the way we want it to be. Right, that's kind of the worst that it gets, I promise, today. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding, that's exactly what it is. All right, uh, so let's find an exact answer. I am not familiar with pi over 12 being on the unit circle. Uh, we want to work in radians, um, all right, so what are we going to do? Uh, this is going to be, let's see, so it's really like 1 12th, right? So I'm thinking of factors of 12, like 1 and 12, that's not helpful here. Um, 2 and 6, but I don't have a denominator of 6 as I work around the unit circle unless something weird happens. But I do have 1 third and 1 fourth, right? So if I had 1 third and 1 fourth, Let's see what order I want, because I want to get 1 12th. So this would be, just trying to think out loud here on why I'm using these. This would be 4 12ths, and this would be 3 12ths. And if I subtract that, it'll give me 1 12th. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Uh, so here's what we really, really, really want out of this is cosine, right? Because it is cosine, cosine of pi over three minus pi over four. All right, so that means we're gonna use the cosine identity here. So we cosine pi over three times cosine pi over four. It was minus, so I'm gonna use plus sine pi over three times sine pi over four. That's yeah, pretty good. All right, let's get everything translated using the unit, cir unit circle. Uh, pi over three for cosine, that's uh, one half times root two over two plus root three over two times root two over two. 
what in the world does all that turn into? It turns into root two over four plus root six over four. Uh, we really like these because there's no radicals in the denominator, which means I don't have to go through all the work that I did up there. Now, is there a GCF in the numerator? There sure is. There's a root two, but I can't reduce it. So I'm quite happy leaving it here unless you want to extend the video for like another three hours. Just kidding. It wouldn't be three hours, kind of, sort of. All right. Uh, next one. Uh, so I just have to identify what function I'm dealing with. The first thing that shows up is sine. So I know this has to do with the sine function. And as I think about the identity, for sine, it stayed the same. So I'm actually dealing with sine 22 plus 13, 22 plus 13. So sine of 35 degrees is what we're after here. Okay. Now, if we're working the opposite direction, uh, we're just trying to find out what was it to get started with for someone to write this weird equation. Okay, so sine of 35, and then we're done with it. Uh, now with this one, it has the double cosine to get started. So I know it's cosine. And I'm dealing with pi over three and pi over four. Now, what I notice for a cosine is the sign's gonna be backwards, right? So this one should be minus between the two of them. Uh, that seems familiar, doesn't it? Uh, so this was uh, four pi over 12 minus three pi over 12. Yeah, we kind of just did this one, right? Uh, so this one is actually the result, uh, what we'd do if we had cosine of pi over 12. Seems familiar because we just did it. All right, last couple, we're just going to verify. We're going to use the identities to say, you know what? This stuff is true, whether we like it or not. So I'm turn the page, make sure I don't mess anything up for you. All right, I'm subtracting. So that means we're dealing with a cosine function as well cosine pi over two and cosine of x, right? I don't have to know exactly what it is. We're just trying to get this thing to turn into sine of x. Cosine function, it says minus right here. So I'm gonna use plus sine of pi over two sine of x. So I'll keep those in for this one. All right, so what is cosine of pi over two? Holy cow, that's a zero. Cosine of x stays cosine of x plus sine of one half, that's one times sine. And I think you see what's gonna happen right here because this turns into multiply, so zero plus sine. So I get just sine. So we're able to verify that pretty easily using our sums and difference. In this case, the difference, right? Uh, this time we want sine. We're gonna work with our sine function first, sine of x and cosine of pi. It says plus, we're working with sine, so it is stay, going to stay plus. Uh, cosine of x times the sine of pi. We want it to turn into negative sine. Let's see if that happens. So sine of x is gonna stay sine of x. Cosine of pi, cosine of pi is negative one. Last I checked my unit circle. Cosine of x is gonna stay exactly what it is. Sine of pi, that's a big old zero right there. Okay, so we have almost the same thing the other way around. Uh, so zero plus negative sine is just negative sine of x. All right, so that's what we're working with here. Um, for better or worse, it's one other formula. Uh, we'll figure out if we uh, how much of that you get. Um, and then we'll just start working on this stuff together uh, when we are together again. And you see the numbers for the homework. If you're in my class, if you're not in my class, then you don't have that homework but you're not in my class, so you got to take what you get, you know what I mean? Peace.